Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about welfare economics. So there's two types of benefits in the market. The first one is consumer surplus. Surplus. Uh, often abbreviated as CS, right? And the second one is producer surplus. This is abbreviated as PS. So it's really important for this section to know how to calculate these because it's gonna get a lot more complicated when taxes come into play, right? So there's um, an important definition that we need to be aware of, right? So we have something known as the willingness to pay, right? And this is just the maximum amount that someone, or that a consumer, we can say, is willing to pay for a good. Right, so this can help us when we're um, trying to figure out our definition for consumer surplus, right? So consumer surplus so what this is right so this is equal to the willingness to pay right this is often abbreviated as WTP I'll write that from now on right minus the price that was actually paid. And then this ends up being P star, right? Because the price that you pay is the market price, which is P star, right? So we can write this in another way, just so it's easier to see. Consumer surplus equals WTP minus P star. Right, so we can look at a graphical definition to make it a little bit more clear. Graphical definition, right, or graphically defining this. Let's draw supply and demand curve. I'm just gonna label my P star real quick, oops. Smudged. Right, so where in this region um, can we find our consumer surplus? Right, so we know that it's going to be the area above P star and below the demand curve, right? So consumer surplus is the area above P star and below demand curve. Oops, you can't see that. Sorry. I'll scoot it over. Um, below demand curve, right? So basically what it is, it's this region right here, right? This is going to be our consumer surplus and you'll have numbers um, to calculate this with, um, you know, coming next week. But consumer surplus is the area above P star and below the demand curve. Okay, let's cover consumer surplus now. Or sorry, producer surplus. Producer. Hopefully that'll focus. There we go. Okay, so then our producer surplus, this is uh, abbreviated PS, right? So this is our price uh, that the firm receives minus the lowest price they were willing 
to accept. Right, so producer surplus, this is the price that the firm receives, so P star minus the lowest price that they were willing to accept, right? So we can write this in other words, uh, P star, right, minus the lowest price uh, that they were willing to accept. So we can write lowest willing price. We can also look at this graphically. Graphical definition. Right, so we have P star again right here. And now, what do you think is our area of producer surplus? Well, producer surplus is the area below P star and above the supply. You can't see that above the supply curve, right? So it's going to be the area in between right here, right? So make sure you're comfortable with these concepts, right? So no, just know, um, you know, how to locate your consumer surplus versus your producer surplus. And then know, you know, the formulas. Consumer surplus is calculated by willingness to pay minus P star. And then producer surplus is calculated by uh, P star minus the lowest willing price. Well, so let's look at a quick example. This example is going to be uh, for consumer surplus. So we're going to want to calculate the individual consumer surplus when P star is equal to $15. So let's start making our little chart. So we have a willingness to pay, right? This is the amount that they actually paid for it, right? What's this known as? This is P star, right? Because this is what the consumers paid for it. And then we calculate our consumer surplus right here. All right, so let's go with, we'll go with individual A, B, and C, right? We know that they all paid $15 for this good, right? We can say that consumer A, um, they were willing to pay $20, right? But they only paid 15. So is there a surplus? Yeah, right? There's a surplus of $5 because we do the willingness to pay from the previous page, right? Willingness to pay minus P star. This is our willingness to pay. This is our P star. 20 minus 15 is 5, right? Person B will say they were willing to pay 17. They only paid 15, right? So their surplus is going to be $2. And then person's individual C was willing to pay $15. They paid $15, so there is no surplus at all, right? They just broke even. They were willing to pay $15, and they actually paid $15, right? And then if you wanted to find your market, um, your market consumer surplus, you would just add these two numbers, right? But for individual surplus, person individual A has a consumer surplus of $5, individual B consumer surplus of two dollars right and c had no surplus because they they bought it for the same amount that they were willing to buy it for so the key right is to be aware of these formulas um be aware of the region that is the consumer surplus later on you're going to have numbers um, to calculate this actual triangle area so you'll see how that uh, moves forward right and be aware of the this formula for producer surplus and the fact that it's the area below p star and above the supply curve Hopefully this was helpful.